Hey quilt makers, I've got a great video for you today. We're going to focus on some cutting tips that will help us all improve on our rotary cutting specifically. Are you ready? Let's get started. Well, well, welcome back everybody. I'm Rob Appel from Stitch in Heaven, also known as your carefree quilter. That's right, we are having so much fun with our new Team Rob, Team Tiffany. You too can get your own Team Rob Appel t-shirt. How great is that? Carefree quilter just meaning that I am not as concerned about precision and accuracy, but I am certainly concerned about having a good time while teaching you all to quilt. And I'm super glad you are all here to learn from me today. It is quite a blessing to see everyone on the other side of the camera. I always say I'm going to do these quick videos and I jinx myself. So let's just see what we can do today. Discussing cutting tips, rotary cutting specifically, right? So I've got three major sections in today's video. First, that we're going to talk about sharp blades. And I'm just simply going to say, I've got another video for that. Meaning I just posted a video all about the different kinds of rotary cutters with the different sizes, the different blades. There's actually a coupon code available if you would like. So let's move on to point two. So first point one is always, always, always a sharp blade. It's safe and it's more accurate. Number two is we're going to prep out our fabric. So you can see here, I have really not prepped anything for today's video because we're going to talk about getting prepped. So I've got all these creases. I've got all of these folds. And so right now when we're getting to step number three. I'm just going to bring this on over to my wool pressing mat and I'm going to run my iron over it. I'm going to press a little steam into it. I'm going to get this crease nice and sharp down here, this fold, because that will actually be important for when I'm cutting itself. So that's part of our key in prepping our fabric. And of course, you want to press as much as you're going to need to cut for your project. You don't want to just press a bit, cut, press a bit. You want to cut or press as much as you can. But we're just going to use this section for our conversation. And that brings us to our third point or our third tip, which is really read the rulers. So let's talk about our rulers while this cools down. Remember folks, fabric has memory and it will be best used if I let it cool before I move it again. So it'll stay nice and crisp. So when I say read the rulers, the first thing I want to talk about, and maybe we'll talk about it once the fabric's underneath it, let's just do that now, is I like to always have a ruler that's large enough to handle my cut. So one of my favorite size rulers is like an eight and a half by 24 inches. The only real disadvantage is there is a half inch marking on one side that you have to remember that's there so that you can accurately cut while using your lines. But once you get used to an eight and a half by 24, then they're very, very easy to use. And I like it because most fabric is 44, but folded. So it's 22. So you can see it's long enough to work with and it's wide enough which brings me back to point two we were talking about prepping our fabric i like to use this fold right down here to lay my ruler on perfectly okay so that line is going to lay right on there before i prep or make any cut so as we're reading our rulers, before we move on with that, let's talk about a couple of other things. Uh, I was saying bigger is better, and I do mean that in this situation. So whenever I'm buying something like these Creative Grids rulers, uh, these are wonderful for making 60 degree triangles. I absolutely love them. But you can see I always want the one as large as possible because I can do as many things with it. I'll Let me pull this out of the way, but I will note real quick that you can see you can make the smaller triangles with the larger rulers. So it's actually an affordability situation too, right? I can make every size from the small ruler with the large ruler. But I will also say it's really convenient to, has, to have a ruler that fits close to the size of the strips you're using or the project you're using. So if I was really using like three inch strips, I wouldn't want this big 12 and a half inch ruler. Uh, I would rather have a smaller ruler like that. But speaking of affordability, uh, you've seen me do a lot of videos on the clearly perfect slotted trimmers. Video, uh, videos, excuse me. 
Rulers like this, they actually come in two packs because they cut many sizes. So I'm often looking for a ruler that will do more than just one job for me. And so I've learned a lot of different things I can do with my slotted trimmers as well. But we're talking about technique today. So remember, let's just back up. Sharp blade, super important. Don't forget to check out the other video. Prepping the fabric and pressing. I've actually got a pressing matters video that also just went out. So yes, point two, there's a, another video for that as well. And then we're now into step three where we're going ahead and we're reading our rulers and we're going ahead and we're now we're gonna start making some cuts. So let's just prepare the fabric here one last time. And what I was showing you all earlier is I always use as many and as large of lines as possible. So now I've got eight and a half inches worth of this line at the bottom where I press that fold. I'm gonna cut a clean mark, a clean edge. And as I now move into cutting technique, I want to talk about where my body's going to be. I want to have my pressure downward. I want to have that sharp blade moving forward. A lot of us like to hold our rotary cutters with a thumb out and an extension here. I think that that's a very good thing. Some folks will actually cut with their fingers up. That's uh, another way of doing it to put a little bit, but I find that I get most pressure with my thumb. I'm gonna lock my wrist and I'm gonna go ahead and open my safety on my blade. And now I'm gonna put pressure. Some of you are not as tall as I am and I'm not the tallest guy in there. Well, I guess I'm the tallest guy in the room, but I'm not the tallest guy out there. So let's say we're not very tall. I've got a cutting table that's set up real nice, but if that's, if I can't really get out there, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start down low I'm gonna put pressure down onto my ruler so I can cut with that sharp blade. But if I get to a point where my ruler feels like it's gonna to start to veer, and you'll know this, folks, you've been there, I want you to stop cutting first, leaving your blade right where it goes. Go ahead and lift up your hand, and then now we're gonna shift our pressure forward for the last half of the cut, and we're gonna push all the way through there making a really nice and even cut. So on these long, long cuts, you might find that you have to put pressure, stop your cut, put your pressure again, and that will help you not cause your ruler to veer. Another really important cutting tip is always staying dominant handed. So I'm right handed. I want all my cuts to be on the right side of my body whenever possible. So now that we've made that first clean cut to square up all of our fabric, I am going to either flip or rotate. Usually I flip because I wanna keep the fold in my lap when possible, okay? And now let's just say we're gonna cut off two and a half inch strips. That's something we use for binding all of the time. So now that's actually what I like, that half inch marker. I'm gonna It could be related to your blade, and again, that's why I've created another video, but it also could be related to poor markings on your rulers, wide markings on your rulers, because the wider it is, it's just less easy to stay accurate. See, I'm great at making excuses. We can blame the tools, right? So at any rate, I'm often looking for rulers that have nice, thin, thin lines, but going back to this two and a half inch, I'm just gonna lay this ruler all the way down, nice and straight here, all the way, I have a nice straight edge here. And another thing I wanna point out when cutting, this is really a cutting tip, is I never start with the edge of the ruler on the edge of the fabric. I wanna be able to take my rotary blade and butt it up against a bit of the ruler, not the tip of the ruler, because as I begin to cut, I wanna cut right into my fabric, all the way through, stopping, moving pressure, all the way back up if needed, there's that really wonderful cut. You can see it's crisp and clean. And I'm leaving a little bit of ruler whenever possible at the beginning of the cut and the end of the cut because that's gonna keep that as straight as possible all the way through the cut. I hope that makes sense. 
Let's say we have to do a really skinny cut. Do I keep cutting into my beautiful fabric? Yeah, let's keep, let's make a really skinny cut just so you can kind of be aware, right? If I have to make a skinny cut, if I, if I, I'd really rather not try to cut, you know, this little skinny strip here, I would much rather adjust my fabric so that what I'm cutting, I'm securing with the ruler, right? So let's say I had to cut a quarter inch off. I had made a mistake in reading the pattern. <laughs> this is not too far off of a story, folks. I'm gonna flip it over so I've got the fold still down here. It just secures everything. Let's say I needed to make a two inch strip instead of a two and a half inch strip. Well, then I'm just gonna rotate my ruler because I've got both markings. I'm gonna lay another flat line down here. But you can see by doing this, it gives me the opportunity to adjust and keep this strip itself that I'm gonna use really pristine under the ruler. So then I would come back here with that extra little bit down here and I would slide through. And that's the way I would shave off if necessary. Now, sometimes it's not possible because you just have to do a little trimming or whatnot, but that's the best way to get the accurate cuts when cutting with your rotary cutter and your ruler, right? Just remember, you want to be able to make sure you can apply pressure when it's necessary, okay? You want to make sure you're reading your ruler correctly because that third Part of the third step and the last thing I got to say is really folks, once you figure it out, I know they say measure twice and cut once, but when it's time for that cutting once, I want you to cut with confidence, okay? I want you to apply pressure down. I want you to go ahead and make sure you cut all the way through. I don't want you kind of sawing back and forth. It's not called a rotary saw, it's called a rotary cutter. And I want you just to get a nice clean push all the way through. Okay, because that's going to give you your best, most accurate fabric strips, which allow, allow, lend, lead, something like that to more accurate quilt making. So at any rate, folks, I hope that really helps. I'm super glad you're watching this whole series on learning to quilt with yours truly, Rob Appel. Make sure you check out some of our other tutorials. I think they're fantastic. Make sure you're subscribed. I forgot to mention that at the beginning of the video because I was so pumped up about the new t-shirts. So make sure you grab yourself a new t-shirt and let us know in the comments below what you would like to learn in this beginning quilting series from us right here at Stitch in Heaven. We are so blessed to have you following along. Till we see you in the next video, folks, please stay well. Thank you so much for watching all the way to the end of the video. It really helps support our channel. If you haven't subscribed, do so now. Hit the little button to be notified every time we go live or do a new video for all of you. And here's one from the past I think you'll really enjoy.